Wow. I'm telling you. Whew. Probably noticed I dressed up a little bit today, you know. Wore a flowery shirt. I tried to look a little different for a change. Keep you guessing. All right. Take your Bibles this morning. Go to Matthew chapter 10. We keep hearing testimonies about a, a basically a release in finances. As you get in line more and more with your thought life with the kingdom of God, you can't help but prosper. You're going to have to try real hard for the blessings of God now to outrun you. Because that's what the Word of God says. How many of you know that? But our way of thinking has to change in order to line up with the kingdom of God. In order to line up with the kingdom of God, you have to know the kingdom of God. And you have to understand the kingdom of God in order to change to be like the kingdom of God. Are you following me? All right, Matthew chapter 10 this morning. Look at verse 7. Jesus is speaking here. He says, And as you go to his disciples, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, and freely what? Yeah. Yeah, no, notice what it says next. I'll do this for the couple who are up here. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. Don't worry, you're going to take care of that. Praise God. All right, look what it says. As you go forth, preach, saying what? Kingdom. Saying what? Kingdom. People all the time come up to me and say, you know, I really want to witness. I don't know how to witness. Well, why not do what Jesus told you to do? Amen. Why not go to somebody and say, hey, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Somebody says, well, I'm not feeling good. To be. I got good news for you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, I'm not doing well financially. I got great news for you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that mean? You don't have to worry about it anymore because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's power to do things. Well, I can heal. I can cast out devils. I can do all these things. What's going to change in the body of Christ? I can't say Christian because in the body of Christ is that there's going to be a revelation that comes down to people in the church of the power that they possess. The only thing that separates the kingdom of God from Christianity is power. Those are the only difference between the two. Christianity teaches you to be good, to come to church, to read, to pray. There's nothing wrong with that. But the kingdom of God, when you step into that, you're going to find out that you have some supernatural power that you never knew even existed. And now you've got to almost convince yourself that you have it rather than someone else who you saw have it because you have it on the inside of you. And the only thing your power will back up is what you preach. So if you're going to preach sin to somebody, God can't really back up their sin. They're already doing a good job already. So when, we, when I witness, I say the kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? That means you don't have to be here anymore. That means you can be healed today. That means you can be set free today. That means you don't have to be depressed anymore. That means you don't have to be poor anymore. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, what is the kingdom of God? It's a government. Say a government. government. Notice the supernatural spiritual government that we all were born into when we got born again into the kingdom of God. You'll hear born again preached all over the place. You'll never hear the kingdom of God hardly ever preached. But the kingdom of God is the main focus focus of Jesus when he was here. He preached kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. Now many times we relate that to the natural governments. I mean, no, there's not one natural government on the earth right now that's working at all. They're all falling apart, every single one. So Jesus knew this day was coming. So he thought he would come and bring a government or a kingdom that when people got into it, it wouldn't be falling apart like every other government. So he's bringing back a spiritual government where there's success, there's power, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's everything you need when you get born into that kingdom. But the church has stopped at the born again experience and guaranteed you heaven. Well, I'm going to need power when I get to heaven. I can't find a devil up there anywhere. Can't heal one sick person. So the power that you have been given by God is not for when you die and go to heaven. It's for the earth. It's for when you're here right now. So basically we see governments all around. And then, and then as a government of the United States, we think we got the premier government. So we go in and we help out people who are in dictatorship. Then we go to try to establish a democracy that's not working for us in their country. I mean, it's not even working here. And everybody says there's so much division. Democracy breeds division. It's by the people. So if you've got three people who want something and two that don't, and the three overrule the two, you've got the two mad at the three forever, and it just keeps going that way. Democracy is not the answer. Communism is not the answer. Socialism is not the answer. The kingdom of God is the answer. But once you get into the kingdom of God, it's going to change the way you operate and the things that you do in order to receive from God. So basically what I want to tell people, I want to tell people there's a different government here. You don't have to worry about this government. There's a new government here. And if you get in line with that government, you won't have to worry about anything because there's power. Say power. Power. Say it like you mean it. Power. Yeah, there's power in the kingdom of God. And each and every one of you... 
possess that power. The problem is we, we, we believe this minister has it, somebody else has it, but it's hard for us to believe that we have it, but the kingdom of God is a message. Now, when I went to school and I went to seminary, and it wasn't really a seminary, but it was a class I took for three years about being a pastor, blah, 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 blah. There wasn't one class on kingdom. So they prepared me to go out and preach nothing. Because the kingdom of God is what I was supposed to be preaching. You can't even find that anywhere. You go to any seminary, you go to anything, there's nothing on the kingdom of God. It's all on being good, not chewing gum, stand behind the podium, uh, don't spit on anybody, uh, start with a joke, you know, all this kind of stuff. And some Bible study in there. But notice, the kingdom of God is what Jesus says we are supposed to be preaching if you're his disciple. How many of you are his disciple? Yeah. Praise God. Good. Go to Matthew 24. All right, Matthew chapter 24, look at verse 14. Jesus is speaking again. They came to him and said, Jesus, when's the end times coming? Would you please answer our question? And he went through a whole bunch of stuff. Hurricanes are going to come. Wars are going to come. Blah, 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 blah. And he got to verse 14 and he says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So people say, when's the end going to come? I don't know. Jesus never answered that question. Nobody knows when the end's coming. Well, let me help you. Here's when the end's coming. When this gospel, say this gospel. This gospel. Not any gospel. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and a witness to all nations. And then, and then shall the end come. So what is it? Is it an earthquake? Next time we have an earthquake, is that going to be the end? The next time we have a, uh, some kind of sickness come around, is that going to be the end? Next time a building gets blown up by somebody, is that going to be the end? No, the end's going to become when we start doing what we're supposed to do and preach the kingdom into all the world, then the end shall come. And then he says, you know what it's like? It's like the days of Noah. The days of Noah, God said, there's something coming. There's something coming. There's a flood coming. Noah said, there's a flood coming. Hammer, hammer, hammer. You're nuts. Nah, hammer, hammer, hammer. You're crazy. Never rained here before. Hammer, 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 hammer. There's a flood coming. And all at once, the flood came. But notice, the flood did not come until he finished the ark. See, we think everything's on God's time. No, God wasn't going to have the flood come until he finished the ark. So when he finished the ark, got inside and closed the door, then, say then, then, then the water came, didn't it? Yeah. So the timing was not God's timing. The timing was Noah's timing. Come on. See, and now he's saying again, you want the end to come? Then it's up to you. When are we going to start preaching the kingdom of God? When are we going to start preaching what we're supposed to be preaching? When are we going to start doing, oh, we'll preach on sin. Oh, we'll preach on this. Oh, we'll preach on that. But nobody wants to preach the kingdom of God because nobody knows there is a kingdom of God and understands the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is a real thing. And if you're starting to step into it a little bit at a time, you're, you're, you're feeling the success in different areas of your life. Amen. Some of you during praise and worship now are feeling the anointing stronger than you ever felt it before in your life. You never even had a goose bump three weeks ago and now once you're pressing in with everybody else and the power of God's coming all over you you don't care who's on your right you don't care who's on your left it's just you and him praise God and the spirit of God's all over you pray and you could care less what happens what takes place who sees me who don't why is that because there's a shift coming in our thinking and it's been coming to this body for a long time and the more we think in line with the kingdom of God the more things are just going to happen in your life and you're going to be up here giving test well I was doing this and God did I was doing I didn't even try to do that I didn't even pray about this and God did this I did because once you get in the kingdom of God Everything that you ever wanted comes with it. Amen. Amen. And the thing is, here's the thing. The main thing that comes with the kingdom of God is power. Say power. power. Now notice, everybody in here and everybody in the world desires one thing. Power. 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 Everybody does. Well, I just love Jesus. No, you're following him to get power. I just love him. No, you don't. You, you're following him for power. That's what you're doing. You want, you want power in your circumstances. You want power to control the things that come against your life every day. You want problem when problems come to your family. You want to be able to control those situations and do something about the situation. You want power to live over those situations. Are you following me? Don't everybody want to do that? When the bill comes, don't you want to have power over it? When the sickness comes, don't you want to have power over that situation? When everything starts coming, you don't want to worry and fear. You want to have power in that area of your life? Yes. Yeah. So everybody's really, what they're looking for is power. Say power. 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 We want to be able to handle the situations of life. So the way that we're taught and the way we grew up to do it is not in the kingdom of God and learn to operate, but make some more money. If I could just win the lottery, all my problems would be gone. 
see, because we think money, if we just get enough money, if we just have enough money, if I just get this much money, I can control circumstances. Well, money, how many you know will help you out in some areas of your life, but in any areas of your life, it won't help you. When sickness hits your body, I don't care how much money you throw at it. There was a woman with an issue of blood that spent all that she had trying to get healed and lost everything that she had, but then she came towards a kingdom person, and the kingdom person set her free in two seconds. How many know she probably wished she'd went sooner? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's got all these bills coming in. She says, my gosh, I didn't have to do any of that thing. So notice, power is the key. Power is what we're hungry for. Power is what we want. We want to be able to be in control. And that's not bad because you go back to Genesis. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let, it, let me give him dominion over everything on the earth. So that's not a devil on the inside of you trying to get you to want dominion and power in your life. No, that's, we're going back to where we were created, do you see? You cannot want something you never had. Are you following me? So basically, how many of you, how many sometimes think about, wouldn't it be great if this was a utopia? That everything was good. And everybody got along with everybody. And everybody had enough. And everybody, everybody, everybody. Well, that's because we've already experienced it in the spirit back in the garden. See, there was a utopia at one time until I'd have messed up. And now we desire to go back to that utopia, which was heaven. How I many of you know that? So that's already on our hearts. It's already on the inside of us. So we want the power to live in a place where we're living in victory 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where we rule our stuff. Well, the kingdom of God promises you that. It does not promise you God's in control of everything. Amen. That's religion. Religiosity. Religion always trying to make you do something to get something. You've got to look what you've already got. The Bible says you've already got an inheritance. Well, I'll get mine when I die and go to heaven. Well, what are you going to do with it then? I'll get my peace and my joy when I go to heaven. You will. I'll have power up there. Good luck. I don't know what you're going to do with it. Cast the devil out of yourself or what you're going to do up there. See? See, everything that we have for our inheritance is already down here. An inheritance you don't get when you die. You get it when someone else died. I'll get it when I die. No, you got it when he died. Amen. My God, that's good, isn't it? Yes. And that was 2,000 years ago, for God's sake. So what are we doing? We're waiting on this inheritance. It's going to come. We're waiting. It's coming. Next revival, we're going to have it. It's a coming. It's a coming. Then we have songs. It's a coming. It's a coming. Can't wait till I get to heaven. It's a coming. Everybody wants to keep you in hope rather than keep you in faith. Faith is what you have right now. And each one, every one of us here has power. And, and what do we want? We want power. I want power over my family. I want power for my grandchild when something tries to jump on my grandchild. I want power when something tries to come and attack my finances. I want power, and I want to get rid of that thing. And I've got the power. The problem is we have to know that we have what he's already given us and use it. Amen. We've got power on the inside of us. You can meditate on the word of God about abundance and close your eyes and just see you as one of the wealthiest women in the world. And I guarantee you money's going to come from the north, the south, the east, in the West, and when you get to that point, you know what? You're going to see it bigger. You may see yourself having enough. Then you're going to see yourself having more enough. Then you're going to see yourself having more enough and giving to the, everybody. Then you're going to see yourself. Why is that? Because the power on the inside of you will do above what you can ask or Amen. the problem is our asking and thinking. They're infantile. Lord, if I could just have $25 this week. He's thinking, my God, I can't even find a 20 in this wallet of mine. It's all hundreds, fifties, and thousands. Amen. Where am I going to get that? I've got to get change from somebody. But our mindset, see, if I can just get by, if I can just make this payment, if I can just live healed for a day, if I can just, and the power in you responds to what you think. And if you're thinking, loser, and I listen to three different radio stations this morning, I can't even come to church on Sunday morning, I swear. One guy was talking about how tongues is not a real thing. That was about 13 seconds of that, then I turned that away. <laughs> It's amazing that what's being preached out there. And I really don't want to handle that. I pray for the poor guy that he gets a revelation, but I feel sorry for the people. Yeah. You like to be sitting under that, man. They tell you, you don't have any tongues. The other one was comparing us to Peter, that we're all deniers of Jesus, but he still loves us. I thought, dear Lord Jesus. So, you know, I went to a financial station. I figured they couldn't screw up. They just talk about money and nobody can be making problems there. I'd listen to that on the way in. But I'll tell you what. I'm going to say this because I want to. <laughs> You are a privileged bunch. There's not a whole churches out there that know about the power of God and about the kingdom of God, but you do. See, each and every one of you do. You know something about it. But the problem is, responsibility comes with what you know. So that's why we've got to get moving, don't we? Look at the disciples. You think the disciples, just Jesus walking by one day and they said, oh, we love him, let's follow him. No, they were sitting on the edge washing their nets because they didn't catch nothing the whole night. 
They fished, got no fish. How I many you know to them, fish equal money? You can't go home with no fish and pay your light bill. You can't go home and pay your electric bill. You can't go home and fish and pay your rent. So they're sitting there. So along comes Jesus and says, Hey, how's the fishing? Terrible. Rotten. Stinky. Let me tell you what to do. Go back out. See? Here's a kingdom guy talking. Go back out in your boat. And I'm going to tell you what to do. So they're thinking, preacher, idiot, trying to tell me how to fish. I've been fishing for 25 years. Fishing is my name. Look at my shirt. I'm a fisherman. Praise God. That's why I am. So they got in the boat, they went out there in the daytime when the fish can see the net. Probably went to the worst place to fish ever and then threw the net on the wrong side of the boat. And Jesus says, you're going to do just fine. And they thought, ugh. And watch this. Now, we just talked about Genesis. I'll give you dominion. What's the first thing he gives you dominion over? Fish, fish of the sea. Yeah. So he's a kingdom man. He says, put your net down there. Fish. And all at once, all these fish are fighting to get in the net. Get out of here. Your master told me to get in there. Get away from me. Get away from me. Get out. I'm supposed to be in this net. You... They're fighting to get in the net. And these guys are going, help us. Bring another boat. Help us. Why is that? Because it's kingdom. Amen. It's kingdom thinking. And when they saw the power, the Bible says, even after that great hall, they left the hall. They left the nets. They left everything. And they followed him. They said, I want some of what he got. What's he got? He got power over all the fish and the sea. He's got power over all this stuff. And I want to follow him. So notice, it's not so much, you know, that we love Jesus or that. We want the power that was given to us a long time ago. In 1 Corinthians, it says the kingdom of God is with power. That's what separates us from everybody else. We have power. We have the answer. The kingdom of God is the answer. That's why we're teaching Wednesday nights on healing. Because there's a place you should be living in divine health. Now, sometimes that does work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Everybody knows that. But if it doesn't work, let's find out why it's not. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, if we came in this morning, turned on the light switch, it didn't work, we wouldn't have said, well, light just doesn't work in this building. We're not going to do any more light. We'll just have service in the dark. No, we had to find out what was wrong with the light switch, wouldn't we? Because it's supposed to work. Well, health is supposed to work. Peace is supposed to work. Joy is supposed to work. Some of you, after last week's message about your father knows now, are even having trouble worrying. <laughs> Talk about terrible. I can't worry anymore. I've got to quit going to that church. <laughs> and then you'll say this, I'm afraid I won't be able to worry anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's the Holy Ghost working in your hearts, getting a hold of you, getting control of you, saying, hey, we don't do this anymore. We don't do that anymore. And uh, how many know the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you? Yeah. Is He in there? Yeah. All right, now here's another thought we've always had. And He's brought with Him the gifts of the Spirit. How many ever heard about the gifts of the Spirit? How many ever read Corinthians about the gift of the Spirit? So we're sitting here after we get born again, sitting around and just sitting there and saying, well, if you want to give me this gift, give it to me. You want to give me this gift, give it to me. Notice, it's already a gift of the Spirit to you. You've already got it. It came with Him. He's in there. But we don't expect it to operate. Maybe one morning when James gets it and comes up and gives a word and we think, oh my gosh, that's good. But that should be using that gift all the time. It's a gift that we have on the inside. You've got to expect what God gave you on the inside for it to operate. When you're ministering to somebody, you should be looking for a word of knowledge before you just do your patent prayer. Heal him, Lord, in Jesus' name. I sure hope this works. We'll see him later. <laughs> Sometimes he'll tell you not to pray. Sometimes he'll tell you the way to pray. Sometimes he'll tell you to teach them the word before they pray. The Holy Ghost on the inside and you have the availability to miracles, you have healings and, and wisdom and knowledge on the inside of you but we don't tap into it because we don't think we have it. We're so glad James and everybody else has it, but not me. I'm just me. No, it's a gift. Say a gift. A gift. Well, if it's a gift, then it belongs to me, doesn't it? Yeah. So there's gifts on the inside of us. We've got to be expecting. And as you expect the things of the Spirit, you start operating in the things of the Spirit. If you don't expect them to work at all, they won't work for you whatsoever. If you don't believe you, when you lay hands on the sick, it's going to do anything, you will never lay a hand on anybody because you know it's not going to do any good anyway. But there's power on the inside of each and every one of us, and things are starting to change. There's a shift. Yeah. There's a shift going on right now. People are starting to get a revelation of it. It's the, the, the newest rank believer who haven't been mistaught yet are just believing the Bible. Amen. Sacrilege. <laughs> I'm going to lay hands on the sick and the little cover. Oh, don't do that. I've done that. See, some of us more experienced people are helping them. I've done that and they've died and you don't want to do that. Then they may sue you because you put hands on them and they'll claim that you... I mean, dear God, we're either going to believe this book the way it's written or we're not the way it's written. And the only way that the power backs up is what he said, not what you think. 
doesn't back up your opinion, doesn't back up any of that stuff, but there is power on the inside of each and every one of us, and the more you believe in it, the more it's going to happen. The more you believe in the word of knowledge, the more it's going to happen. Every time I have a counseling session, uh, I'm, I'm thanking God for the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, because I'm going to have to speak something to these people's lives. And many times he shows me what to speak before they get there. Many times he has a question for me to ask before they get there. Why is that? Because God knows what he's doing. And the best part about it is, God wants that person helped. Amen. We're not begging him, oh God, please, please let me help him. Yeah, he says, that's what I got you there for. Do it. Do what you're supposed to do. So the words of wisdom that can come to you, come to your workplace, come to you anywhere, if you're expecting up to happen. The word of wisdom is there. The gifts of healings are there. The gifts are already there on the inside of us, the Spirit of God. But we want to limit them to certain people. Or we want to get to this great big stage of growth where they actually work. No, no. As soon as you get born again and you get in the kingdom of God, praise God, the Spirit of God comes to live on the inside of you. And at that time, the Spirit of God can do anything the Spirit of God did in Jesus. Notice... Jesus the man, say Jesus the man, Jesus the man. made Christ the God, Christ the God. Legal, legal on earth. On How earth. many of you believe that? Yes. If, what, if he wasn't in Jesus, he couldn't minister. He's a spirit. So he had to get in the man Jesus, and then through Jesus, he did everything that God wanted him to do through Christ who lives on the inside of him, and they're one and the same. Well, now, the man Tom Amen. <laughs> makes available Christ in me the hope of glory to operate in the earth realm because he's legal but he's only legal through me he's got to have a body and that's why on Pentecost day or I mean on yeah on Pentecost day I mean it wasn't just one person now is 120 and then 5,120 then 10,100 and God just thought everybody would think this was good news <laughs> see he was, he was misconception there he didn't know the church would drown out the power. He didn't know it would drown out and just say, God's going to do everything for you. Don't worry. Just do your best. Don't pray in tongues because that's of the devil. And don't do this and don't do that. And, and then they want to preach on sin and they want to preach on all this other stuff. That ain't going to help you anyway unless you know in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, preach the kingdom of God. He preached the kingdom of God. If I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, then I must preach and study the kingdom of God. Otherwise, I'm following someone else. And we followed other pastors and other preachers who were successful. And that's all right, praise God. But someday, God's going to take you beyond. See? You all know what you all know, but you know more when you get something from me because you already knew what you knew before you came in here. Now you know more because it came from me. That was too deep. About 90% of you missed that. Yeah. Yeah, you only know what you know. That's why you can't tell everybody what you know all the time. Sometimes you've got to be quiet and find out what somebody else knows. Oh, and maybe they'll add something to your knower. You see? But some of us want to tell everything we know. No, clam it. Clam it up, just listen. And the Spirit of God will speak to you through other people. He'll speak to you through yourself. But there's going to be a movement of the Spirit, and the movement's going to be in us, not out here somewhere. Right. The movement out here, revival out here takes place because there's revival in here. That's what it is. It's not an outside revival. It's an inside revival. And you can walk in revival every single minute of every single day. You can be praising God all day long and thanking God. You can thank God and praise God for things that aren't going so well. You're still thanking and praising Him. Because when you walk in that realm, you've got a connection with the Holy Ghost, and He will show you which way to go. He'll show you the direction. He'll show you what to do. He'll show you how to do it. You'll hear that still, small voice on the inside. That's what being led by the Spirit is. It's not putting on a white robe and floating around during praise and worship. <laughs> See, because the Holy Ghost, he, he brings sometimes feelings with Him, too. How many of you know that? And if you want to get all flaky because of your feelings, then you're just going to squelch the Holy Ghost anyway. But you just listen to the Holy Ghost and do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. The power of God is real. Say, the power of God, power of God. Is, real. is real. And notice, it's real on the inside of you. Each and every one of us. If we're going to get this thing and Jesus to come back, somebody's got to start preaching the kingdom of God. Mm. Come on. Come on. I'm careful who I send money to. Because if they're not preaching the kingdom of God anyway, right. I'm really financing nothing. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're going over there and we're telling them they're all sinners and blah, 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 blah. Well, do you preach the kingdom of God? Uh, no, and we'll preach that when we get to heaven. Well, then give me my $2.50 back, please. Because <laughs> I want to put that in good soil. 
See, we want kingdom priests. We want kingdom mouth. That's what Jesus did. That's all he taught on. That's all he did. Now it's our responsibility. Say, it's my responsibility. My responsibility. So the disciples followed Jesus. Why did they follow Jesus? Because they saw the power. Praise God. And imagine, he's trying to teach these guys. God bless him. Somebody says, how can you teach every week and see people not progress? Look at Jesus' disciples. My Lord. I'd rather have anybody in this church rather than one of them twelve. <laughs> teaches about power. He teaches about this. He's healing everything. He's walking on water. He's doing everything. Then he falls asleep and tries to get a nap in, in a boat. And a little wind comes up. And all of a sudden, we're going to die. I bet he thought there's two and a half years right down the drain. <laughs> Go on, think about that. Well, what, have, what have I been telling you? You saw me walk on water. You saw me multiply the stuff. And now a little wind comes up and you want to panic and die. And he stands up and says, rebukes it. How many you know it? Listen to him. See, when we start walking in this realm, there's going to be a lot of things listening to us that aren't listening to us right now. See, when you're walking in this realm, demons will listen to you. When you're walking in this realm, sickness will listen to you. When you're walking in this realm, fear will listen to you. They'll start to fear. But you can't live in fear, then cast out fear. You can't be thinking fear and expect fear to leave. No. And I'll tell you the most dangerous thing in the world today, in my opinion, is pity parties. Because I think when you get in a pity party, it takes you way down low and gives him a good shot at you. Because that's one thing that you really get into. And, then, and it's a good place to get offended too because when people won't pity party with you, you know what? You don't care. If you really cared, if you're really a brother or a sister, no, if they're really brother or sister, they'll rebuke you. And then we'll find out how much of a brother and sister you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be hated by the world if you're not careful, and the Christians. Yeah, so basically the, there's a flow of the Spirit coming, and we're going to start moving in that Spirit realm. We're going to start living in that Spirit realm. You're going to see things happen. Once things start happening in the Spirit, I don't know, it's, it's like an addiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. <laughs> you're just looking. You're like a radar. <laughs> it's like in my car. You know, I get it on now when I put the cruise on. It's got this little thing. And when you get too close up behind somebody, it slows your car down. We're going to have that radar. And you're going to be walking by 20 people. And once one's going to walk by and your radar is going <laughs> to. And you're going to follow that person. Say, hey, do you know Jesus? No. Would you like to? Yeah. And we don't have to be afraid of people. We don't have to be afraid of Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> Invite them in. If you start preaching the gospel, they won't be there that long sometimes. Because <laughs> they've got somebody on the outside watching them to make sure you don't give them the truth. So if they're in too long, they'll come pull them out before they get into the truth. Can you imagine that? Yeah. We don't have to be afraid of anybody. We don't have to be afraid of going anywhere, doing anything, praise God. Why is that? Because we've got power on the inside of us. So, so the disciples are all flustered. The wind and the waves stop and everybody's all happy and everything like that. And, and they thought, oh, Jesus, you're so wonderful. Oh, you're so good. You're for... And he looks at them and said, why didn't you do that? And they said, what manner of man is this? <laughs> that even the winds and the sea obey him. And even the fish obey him. And even the water obeys him. And the thing is, a lot of times we step out in the spirit realm, but when we run into resistance, we back up. Because once you start walking in the realm of the Spirit, you are going to run into different stuff. But that's what's so good. we got the power to get through that stuff. Are you following? Look at Peter. Jesus walks up to him, walks up to him on the water and says, come. Now, how many know Peter had to think about that for a little bit? And he gets out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. Oh, oh my God. Look at, look at me. And then he saw the, and the, and he began to. And not assist. Jesus not only caught him, but remember, Jesus was walking on the water. I could see if he was in a lifeboat and pulled him in. No, Jesus walking on the water. Now he's carrying Peter, and he's still walking on the water. Is that wild? And watch how deceptive the devil is. How many of you think if it wasn't windy that day, Peter could have walked on the water? Come on, that's our mindset. Well, the wind and the waves, I can't walk on the water. You can't walk on the water if it was a still, calm day with the sun shining. <laughs> Well, we can't do that because the wind's blowing. Oh, dear God. The devil comes in to see me. Look at the poor guys in the fiery furnace. They're going to throw them in there. They won't do what they want them to do. That's why they say, we're going to make it seven times hotter. Well, how much more Bernie can you get when you're already going to be burned up? 
See, there's a devil trying to antagonize you to back down, trying to antagonize you to say no to the supernatural realm, trying to show you that it's not going to work. I'll tell you what, you're really going to get it now. Yeah, I'm going to turn that furnace up, blah, 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 it was. And no, and none of these things in the natural affect the spiritual that much. If you stay in the spirit realm, they'll just bounce off you. But he wants to play with your head, see? He wants to tell you you don't have the power. He wants to tell you you can't do it. He wants to tell you that you're just a little Christian fighting in your little armor, trying to make it all day long and make it through. No, no. We are people full of the Spirit of God. We're sons and daughters of God Himself. Our Papa Father's got a will to be done on this earth, and we're the ones that carry that will done. We pray as His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are His will here. And whatever you're going to do in a spirit that goes beyond your brain, if you know it's His will, it's a lot easier to do it. Amen. We've been teaching that you've got to know it's God's, God's will for you to be healed before you're ever going to be healed. Amen. If you got the thoughts of, why don't God heal me? I wonder if He's going to heal me this time. I wonder if He really wants to heal me. You need to get them things out of there. You need to get rid of those things. Because that's not God. God wants everyone, every single person healed. And He gives it even ways to stay healed. Amen. When Saul came under bondage for disobedient, he didn't call anybody. He called a musician. The musician brought the anointing through his plane and drove the evil spirit away from him. Well, I don't understand why you do praise and worship every Sunday. I'm just going to show up at 11.15 because I want the Word of God. And then i got to preach the depression off of you that could have been off of you with the first song when you came in that day because the musicians would have drove it off you through the power of God and it opened you up to receive something from the sermon for our change. God, mighty. People don't understand. Your Lord. Yeah, praise and worship's great. It'll set you free. You come in here depressed, you better be careful. You may start to lift your... You might even get your hands up this high if you listen to the third song. That's yeah, a devil who don't want you praising and worshiping because he's afraid you're going to. It's a spirit of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Ever had a spirit of heaviness? Yeah, it can come on you. There's no, no nothing saying it can't, but when it does, we know what to do. We're kingdom citizens. We just praise that thing. I don't get out of here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Tommy, you know it's not easy to pre praise when you when things aren't going real good the way you want them to go. <laughs> Chrissy knows, see? She knows. Yeah. Praise God. So we're going to start walking in the Spirit. We're going to hear the voice of God. We're going to operate in spiritual gifts. Go to the spiritual gifts every morning and say, Thank you. Praise God. I'm glad I operate in these, Lord. And whenever you, whenever you want them to go, we'll go with them. Praise God. We'll figure it out and we'll do it. And we'll. But that's what it is. It's the power of God. Praise God. There's things He's given us to keep us in the Spirit. Thessalonians says, Rejoice always. Pray at all times and be thankful in everything. You know, what's our chances of doing one of those things? They rejoice always, pray at all times, thankful in every circumstance. I mean, if we can just do one of those to start with and do the next and do the next one, you walk in the Spirit of God all day long. Hey, things are going to hit you during the week. It's no surprise that things are going to come against your life and they're going to attack your life. But it's how you handle those things that come into your life of whether you live in victory or not. See, you're the one. I always tell my wife, life is nothing but a bunch of changes. And you either decide to deal with the changes as they come or you drown in the changes when they come. Because many times you look at the, I wish it was the way it was in the past. Well, I'll tell you, it's not going to be the way it was in the past because you're not in the past anymore. You're up here and there's a change. So here we are, we're young teenagers, young boys. Got the whole world, got everything all made. Running into a little girly out there someplace. Praise God. Find a little girly, start dating her. How many know that's a change? <laughs> yep is this the one is that the one if it's a kingdom one it is if it's not it's not it's pretty easy to figure out Amen. if you know nothing about God or about the kingdom I don't care how good looking she is you're going to pay the price brother I'll tell you that right now <laughs> it's not going to work and then you find somebody and then you get married and all at once everything changed <laughs> I wake up and she's there I go to eat breakfast and she's there. I come home at night and she's there. I go to bed and she's there. And sometimes it's hard to believe that she doesn't agree with me. 
what is wrong with thou is this, this is woman? And of course, when you're dating them, you are seeing the best. Come on, I'm funny because I'm talking truth. You see the best, but then you get married and you see there's a lot of things she did not reveal to you and he did not reveal to you. But now it's too late because you stuck. You in a mess, aren't you? See? And then you have a kid. My God, talk about change. All at once, it's no, no longer fighting over mine, mine. It's theirs. You lose all time. You lose all space. You lose all control. Whatever that kid needs, that kid gets, whatever hour of the day it is, whatever. And then you go through that and think it's never going to end. But it does. And it ends quickly. Time goes fast, goes through. And then once they're out of the house, and once again, it's just you and... And you get up with her. And you eat breakfast with her. And you talk to her. And you're with her. her. And you take a shower. And you, whoa! Whoa! Hey, this is not an X-rated show. This is PG at best. That's what you The beliefs on this film are not that of the pastor or any of the pastor rats that are with him. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't finish it, sister. <laughs> yeah, change, 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 change. But we can adjust to the changes in our life. All we got to do is make those adjustments as they come. You, you're not going to stop changing your life. Things are going to change in your life. That's just the way it goes. So basically, we want to stay in the spirit at all times. At all times, I want to stay in the spirit. At all times, I want to make sure that power is flowing on the inside of me. I don't, you know, they talk about the, the spirit coming on the inside of you as a well. You know, springing up. Well, it's got to keep springing up. You can't have people come along and kick dirt in your well all the time. You can't have them plug up your well. You've got to keep that well going at all times. And now why I always thought, Jesus, why, why did you make it better like a well? Well, if you've ever been to Israel, how many of you been? The rest of you need to go. See my travel agent right down here for your trips to <laughs> Israel, praise God. Yeah, when you go over there, the first place you've got to go, if you're going to start a city or anything, you need to dig a well. You know, it's rocky, it's whatever over there. Even over here in the United States, if you're going to start a new community, how many know the first thing you're going to need is a? And a well is very, very important to your community, to whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to... I mean, if somebody shuts off the water here in Port St. Lucie, I mean, we're going to have trouble in Port St. Lucie and Fort Pierce. Well, it's the same way. He said there's a well on the inside of us. This well has to become as important as the wells to those people back in that day. Because on the inside of you, you have to not only have this well, you have to protect this well. Yes. You have to protect the anointing. You have to want the anointing. You have to love the anointing. You have to protect the anointing on the inside of you. And how many know there's a lot of antichrist spirits in the world? Yes. See, we read that scripture. The Antichrist is coming back. He's coming back. But John said that the Antichrist spirit is already in this world. Yeah. And now, what, what kind of spirit is he? He's an anti-Christ spirit. Say Antichrist. Antichrist. We found out Christ is the power of God. So he's an anti-power of God spirit. What's he trying to do? Keep you from operating in the Christ that's on the inside of you, which to most is a mystery. To most churches, it's a mystery. They don't even know Christ lives in them, the hope of glory. They think Jesus walks with them or floats around or something, but they don't understand that Christ is already on the inside of each and every one of us. So he lives in us on a daily basis. What's the devil afraid of? You allowing him to operate through you. You allowing him to let that power flow out of the inside of you. He is afraid of you. Do you understand? Don't fear the devil. He's already afraid of you. And we walk in the power of God and the things of God and we release the anointing on the inside of us. We're going to see the world change quickly. Say quickly. I mean, notice how quickly the kingdom of God preaching could get out with the internet and everything that we got out there if we just use what we've already got and start spreading it out there. You know, we're doing it a very small way. We're on the internet. You know, we've, we've got our mytcvc.com. We've got the books going out in different places and in everywhere. You know, I, I think maybe I was thinking about the other day that, uh, you know, some of these places where people go who are having a little problem for a while, like those, I don't know if they're mental hospitals are called, or health behavior, I guess they're called now. Health behavior. I'm thinking that'd be a good place to take a stack of books. Amen. Because how many know most of those people in there just don't have a purpose? If they have a purpose, then maybe they would go in that direction. So I'm thinking about going to one of these and just saying, hey, can I just put some books out here on your thing? They got nothing to do in here and read anyway. Pick the thing up. Find out they got a purpose. Might change their life just like that. Praise God. And then, of course, I send them a bill for all the people that I delivered. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's working, praise God. We can see it going out. We've got people in the prisons. I mean, Kelly's in the prison. They're, they're doing a Friday night show on radio now yeah. for one hour. They're getting a word out. The, the doors are opening, and it's not because we're trying to open them. It's because they're opening, and then we're just taking everything we got into those situations and stuff. There's ministries all over the place in here. Susan still does a ministry. She's part of this body yet. She does ministry to the, you know, the homeless. So people are out there. Your job is a work area. And you've got power to do what God wants you to do. The thing is, you have to get a revelation of the power that's already on the inside of you. Don't wait till you die and go to heaven. Because you're not going to get anything done then. But the kingdom of heaven is being preached more and more. I see some pastors starting to delve into it, starting to talk about it, starting to think power. Most churches don't know that they have any power. They don't know that they can heal the sick. They don't know they can cast out. They don't know they can do anything but come to church, do their best, be good little boys and girls, and basically that's it. And that's all right. How many know they're going to go to heaven? And that's okay, but I want more while I'm down here. I want to do what God wants done down here. I want to bring the heaven realm into the earth realm through the power of God that he's placed on the inside of me. I want to see the blind eyes open. I want to see people delivered. I want to see devils come out of people. I want to continue to see the things that I've sown for the last 30 years, praise God. And this is the day, praise God. This is the hour. You know what? I can feel it. Can you feel it? I can feel it. I can feel it. Seeing more and more results, easier results. Hallelujah. Easy results. And pe some people who you think are the most messed up are the logical ones to get to. They've got into a place where they've got nowhere else to go. They, they don't know what to do. They're at the bottom rung of life, and that's the time to step in and throw that preserver out there, praise God, because they've got nothing else to do. And I'll tell you what, addiction's going to start leaving people not because of deliverance, because they're going to be drawn by the power of God so close to God that they're not going to desire it anymore. Right. I never got the devil cast out of me for alcohol. I just drew close to God, and, and he took the desire away. So why should I do it? And then he told me he didn't want me doing that anymore. So I didn't do it anymore. It was simple. But if you're just going to try to live on the outskirts, tap into God every now and then when I need something, I need something, I need something, it's not going to work. The Bible says you draw close to him, he will draw See, so as we continue to draw in through the revelations we're getting here, through the Bible, through the Spirit of God, through the things that are going on, you're going to see more and more results financially. Praise God, I'm telling you right now. Everybody in here is growing financially, making more money. How many know that's good for the church? Yeah. People say, you gave me a great tip on that money, and I got in, and I'm making good money on it. Good, because we get 10% of it, praise God, right here at TCVC. Hope you make a million. Praise God. Hallelujah. See? We will. And then the more you give, of course, the more you... Yeah. It just starts snowballing, starts going around, keeps going. We order more books. We do more things. We get out there and do stuff. And that's the way it works in the kingdom of God. It's not a one-time miracle. It's like a snowball effect as you're rolling down the hill. You're just changing every single day of your life. The power of God's getting real. So just like you can, you can advance yourself to see yourself not poor anymore, but see yourself rich because of God's Word. Say on God's Word. God's word. Now we meditate on God's Word. God's we don't meditate on... Hmm. No, we don't meditate on that. We meditate on God's Word. So you find the power of God. You know, Ephesians chapter 1, the power that's been given to me. I see myself. All at once I'm looking, and I, and I observe to do. And all at once I see myself laying hands on the sick. I see myself preaching. I see myself doing all this stuff in here. And then when it gets in here, it's easy to do out here because you already did it in. That's what gets the fear out of your life right then. The only time you're fearful is when you haven't seen it in here first. Then you're afraid to do it. So the Spirit of God's on the move, praise God. He's on the move on the inside of each and every one of us. The power of God's moving. His church is on the move. People are being saved, healed, and delivered. I see the power of God getting stronger and stronger. I see hungry people. I see people who are coming to worship and praise. I see people who are fired up with the things of God. I see people who want God. I see people who are hungry for the things of God, that they're putting other things aside that are keeping them back from doing what God wants, that they're reading the Word more. They're spending time more with God. They're putting TV and other things that are bothering them all behind because now is the day and the hour, and they know that they've been called by God and they know that they have a purpose right here right now and they're going to start flowing in that purpose and the peace and love of God is going to be all over them as they go forth and they're going to be living in a victory like never before and other people are going to see it and they're going to say what do you guys got it's going to be the power of God and the power of God is flowing on the inside of each and every one of us and they all want to be delivered anyway with the glory and the power of God and the power of God touches them and they feel the presence of God they're going to go home and they're going to take it to their wife and they're going to take it to their children and they're going to take it to their grandparents and they're going to go up to Ohio and take it to there and they're going to go over here and Idaho and take it over there and they're going to go over here and take it over there and it's going to spread like a wildfire. Just saying, just saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Yep. 
that's what's that's what's coming in the future. That's what's coming. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and growing more and more. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like looking. I like looking at people. Everybody's awake. Praise God. It's doing good this morning. Doing good this morning. Believe it. Praise God. Go to the Word and believe it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this Word this morning. Lord, I know it. As sure as I'm standing here, praise God. This is the day and the hour to be alive. This is the day and the hour to be in the kingdom of God, to be a son and a child of God. I thank you for the power that you placed on the inside of each and every one of us. I thank you there's not a little tiddly wink of power, but it's the power of Almighty God Himself. And the same miracles and even more that Jesus did in this earth, we're going to see in our daily life. Holy Spirit, I release you to go ahead and release the gifts of Spirit on everybody in here. Release the, the revelations, release the healings, release the, those gifts. Father, we want to go ahead and do your will, and we know we can't do it in our ability, so we thank you for the Spirit of God's ability on the inside of us. I give you praise and glory and honor for what you're doing in this day and in this hour, and we give all the glory to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, Wednesday night, 7.30.